and hello YouTube, this is JS Man with Smart, and today on a brand new video for Gaming with JS, and today we have the long-awaited PvE build that several of you have been asking me. I'm going to share with you uh, two of my favorite PvE builds, one that I run most of the time, and one that's kind of for fun, but still really cool. Now, pardon the huge UI footage in the background, it's only going to be there for, you know, the first two, three minutes, um, because I'm using a damage meter. Now, if you want to know what this damage meter is, it's Jackson X uh, damage meter. You can Google it, install it. It does require you to configure your game very distinctly, and that's why I have to have this huge UI and have the chat th the way it is and whatnot. So those are the drawbacks of it, but if you want to have a damage meter, and if, if you have a pretty good large screen resolution, <laughs> I'd say it's worth to get. I just needed it to get the numbers for this build. So I can do a video on it if you'd like, but it's pretty straightforward installation and it is legal for Guild Wars 2. So uh, this PvE build, I'm going to show you the first build, obviously, which is the focus of the video. I'm only going to cover the second build very shortly. Uh, but the main PvE damage burst Ellie build is super powerful. I love playing this on my Ellie, regardless on the area, because you can hit up to 14k damage. And note that I don't have all of my Ascend stuff here. I'm still missing uh, two trinkets for Ascended Berserker stats. So I'm pretty sure you can hit 15, 16, 17k with the food applied. Uh, note in that video I don't have the food even applied or the um, sharpening stone that I'm going to be suggesting. So you can easily hit 17k probably on this build, probably even higher. It's ridiculous amounts of damage. And you can get DPS close to 20k, probably, if not 20k. In footage, you'll see that I've gotten DPS to around 19k, 14k, 15, 16k. It's crazy. And even if you're not hitting those high damage spikes of 14k, 15k on highest hit, you can still do 10k average, 9k average, and you'll still DPS overall with all of your damage combined. You can get well past 15k dps which is insane um so i'll go over the build right now we're gonna go back to the normal ui here as you see we're standing in a uh, queensdale and i'm not sure if my movie my, my microphone just caused some weird noise but apologies for that but essentially we're running staff obviously staff is the power ellie build and i'm gonna go over the skills first i'm pretty sure you guys know how to use the skills so i'm not gonna go over that really but this is Tempest. Be aware, this is a, we are using Tempest for maximum damage. If you don't have Tempest, I can make a separate PvE guide for just staff non-Tempest. I can take a look at my old guide that I used last year, well, my old build, and I can make a video of it. But essentially, you want to go... Um, now, for your heal, you can either go the um, Wash the Pain Away, which is a really powerful group heal. However, having Arcane Brilliance isn't bad either because it gives you another Blast Finisher. So you can get huge heals or you can give might. But I just like Wash the Pain Away because it really works well when I'm in a group. And it's a really powerful heal. Signet of Fire is a must. Increases your precision. And that's always good. Uh, we have higher critical chance. Uh, Glyph of Storms. Really good if you want to get some. Especially on, on Lightning. Well, Air. I mean, not Lightning. Air. You can burst out some vulnerability. And then overload Air some more vulnerability which makes everyone do tons more damage so very useful and if you want to go on fire for just extra burns uh great too and for your aura you sort of want to this is sort of a situational i guess you could use arcane shield for some more defense you could use uh conjure ice bow frost bow for uh Enemies that have large hitboxes, you could use that. It does a substantial amount of damage. Just make sure you lava front first, and I'll go over you know our rotations in a second and what's the importance of lava front. Um, and you could go aftershock, which is great for uh, reflects. And you could also go feel the burn for extra damage for a fire shield that gives you might. So I like to go fire shield for the extra damage. However, if you're going against someone that you know, is shooting at you with projectiles, you definitely want to go Aftershock because it does still do damage and it reflects damage. So damage output would be pretty good there. So, you know, depending on what you like, you could use Frost Frostbow, like I said, still. But just um, th these four I would recommend. So those are our skills. And for your Elite, I highly recommend you go Glyph of Elementals. It's such a powerful 
uh, elite depending on if you need more healing you can get your uh, ice your water elemental and if you get you need more tankiness you can get your earth elemental if you want extra damage more burns at the end of your fire rotation in fact you are going to be summoning a glyph of elementals to get more damage out so a uh, glyph elemental is really good you could use fire great sword if you like that's still very good a uh, choice Especially if you're going into another attunement such as water or earth because most of the time you're gonna want to stay in fire most of the time because otherwise you'll reduce your DPS by a lot. So if you want to use fire greatsword, especially if you're locked out of fire because you switched to another attunement, then fire greatsword isn't a bad idea as well. So those are our skills. Let's go ahead and go over our traits real quick because those are important as well. Now for our traits, it's pretty standard. Fire and air have always been uh, two of the primaries and that's what we're gonna be using today. For fire, we're gonna have top, top, top. And mainly because it's the only, it's pretty much what we've been running for the past few years anyway. Uh, the first one here, obviously, critical hits have a chance of causing burning. And since we have a lot of precision in this build, we're gonna have lots of a critical chance anyway so more damage on critical and we have to be attacked now don't we let me go to a safer spot so we can actually do this build without being interrupted okay so we should be safe on the side of the road here so yeah um, first trait here is just for getting more burns out longer burns and more damage because we have such a high critical chance anyway the second one once again just a damage boost this is the only one you would realistically take anyway to get more damage out and the last one which is very synergizing with our lava fronts make them last longer so um this is basically what you want to run fire it boosts your dps it boosts your lava fronts and it just boosts everything damage wise now for air i'm gonna be picking a uh, bottom middle top i have seen variations of this i've seen people go bottom bottom top however I feel like you get a lot more damage with this middle one, but we'll get there in a second. This one is clearly the winner here. Gain ferocity based on percentage of precision. So ferocity makes you hit harder on a critical hit, which is always good. We want to have that for more damage. And for this last one, we want to have a uh, top here because damage is obviously increased. Whenever you see damage increase by you know 20, 30%, you obviously want to take that. Now for this middle one, the reason why I'm taking uh, middle here is because we have faster recharge rate, which is good for applying more vulnerability, which is good for applying more damage then. And we get a precision increase, which makes us crit more. Now, increasing precision on an elementalist is never bad because you're never going to be hitting 100% crit. You're never going to be criticaling on every hit. So boosting your precision is never a bad idea. So you may as well get that. Now, you do have the option of running this trait here going bottom whenever you're stunned or whenever you surround yourself with a shocking aura, you do more damage. So that's a 20% boost. However, we don't really have a main source of a shocking aura. And this one is on a cooldown, I believe, isn't it? It should be on a cooldown. And it's only when you're stunned. And essentially, you're going to be far away anyway as an LA. You're going to be hitting from the back. So that's why I, that's at least how I play the alien. I play it from far range and I tend to do a lot of my damage from far away and I try to kill before they get to me. So I like to use uh, the middle trait here for precision anyway. Now here's where Tempest comes in and makes this build a lot more powerful. The first trait here, this is, you can pick any of these really, but I like this one because it gives you an extra aura and for fire, it gives you an extra fire shield, it gives us more might and it's just generally fairly good. So this one right here, you could go, actually this is the only real one. When you're overloading and fire, it gives you stability so you can get more damage out without being interrupted. And then we have Elemental Bastion, which just gives us a frost aura on uh, auras that we apply. Not really anything crazy. I mean, this just gives us the ability to have overloads this entire trait line, which is essential. And this is just a nice little perk. So nothing too crazy in Tempest, but it helps us out and it gives us overloads. Now, why do we want overloads? Mainly because, well, lightning or air, I keep saying lightning. I'm so used to the elements because Final Fantasy. But essentially, storm here or air, 
again, damn it, air, mainly used for vulnerability, clearly, right? And then fire here, this is the cool thing. We're able to double up on our lava fronts and do a lot more damage with our overload fire because essentially what you want to do is, let me let me show you the rotation real quick. Let me go to a, a harder area. Let me go to Verdant Brink, let's say, or Arc Basin or somewhere so I can show you an example of how you want to do your rotations. Now while we go there, essentially what you want to do is you want to lava front whenever you can. Because lava fronts last longer, because lava fronts are being boosted by our traits, and because overload fire works very well with a lava front and all your other abilities, you want to lava front as much as possible. And in between lava fronts, you want to either meteor shower or overload fire or do auto attack fireballs. And that will give you the most amount of damage out of your rotation as possible. And if everything's on cooldown, a glyph of elementals for the uh, firebird that does more damage, more burning. So an extra boost there. So we finally made it to Verdant Brink. Let me head down and show you a quick. So we're going to fight this guy right here. Hopefully I don't die. So you want to start off on air. And the reason why is because so you can get vulnerability off first. So like this, vulnerability. Then you want to use overload air. Then fire, lava front, meteor shower. And yeah, we just got knocked down, so let me heal real quick. And he's actually being killed really quick already. But Lava Front, Meteor Shower, which will boost your damage. Lava Fronting and then Meteor Shower will boost the damage of Meteor Shower. But check this out. Here's the synergy between the Lava Front and the Overload Fire. You can Lava Front here, then Overload, then Lava Front again when this is over double ups on our lava front and as you see we have this whirling fire tornado sort of thing which does even more damage and does more fire damage more burning and it's just really cool so lava front and overload fire works very well together if you do them one after the other and then add another lava front you can double up and it makes it really powerful for we'll do it here again we can do lava front overload and then by the time we finish overloading we can lava front again and as you see, we have that Whirlwind of Fire, which just, just does a lot of more damage as well, and increases your DPS altogether. So, so the general rotation is you want to start on start on air. A uh, Glyph of Storms on air is your first, then Overload air, and then you want to go to Fire and start doing uh, Skill two, Skill five, and if Skill if uh, Overload's not ready yet, you want to do Meteor Shower first, then Law Front again, and then Overload. That's how you want to do exchange between doing this and when everything's on cooldown, you basically want to do Glyph of Elementals. And that's how I've been playing this build for a long time. Now you could do um, Fire 3 and Fire 4 if you have like nothing else to use, so that's fine. And by that time, everything else should be back up. But try not to go out of the Fire Attunement unless you have to. Don't go into Earth unless you need to Blind, unless you need to Reflect. Don't go into Water unless you need to Heal or you need to cause Chill Damage which really isn't really needed. Try to stay in fire as long as you can because it does provide the most amount of DPS. Let's take a look at the gear. We've gone over rotations, we've gone over skills, and we've gone over traits. Now the gear, like I said, it's not complete yet for me. However, I'm running full Berserker everything. Now I have seen people who have used um, Assassin Trinkets which you could do, I guess, because it increases your ferocity from our air trait. Or you could just run an assassin weapon and two assassin trinkets, two assassin earrings and a weapon, and everything else berserker to sort of min and max. However, I just like having a huge amount of power. Entirely complete with this build, with the correct food, with the correct sharpening stone, with everything uh, berserker... Ascended material. I'm only missing what am I, what am I missing here? I'm only missing uh, these two right here two accessories. I'm missing and I need guild commendations I have like eight guild commendations right now So I need four more to get one of these and another 12 to get another so once I get the two other berserkers um, Accessories here. I'll basically have this build complete because I even have the ascended Madri backpack here So once you have everything berserker you have your food everything else you can be close to almost 3,000 power, 
which is insane. You have like 2,900 and something. So that's really crazy. You have a ton of damage. And your critical chance could, could be up to 70% even, especially if you're in air. And the fact that you have your signet of fire, sometimes you can get your precision up, even with the uh, with the food and everything. You can hit 70, 80 percent of the time critical. So you're gonna be criticaling almost all the time, and this is without any assassin gear. So without any assassin's gear, with just all berserker, and with the correct food that I'll go over in a second, you can have almost 75 percent chance crit, which is really good. Three out of four hits are gonna be crit hits. So that's what I'm running now for sigils on the weapon. I'm using sigil of frailty and sigil of force. However, I do recommend that you get sigil of accuracy because we're not using any assassin's gear and it is, it is good to have assassin's gear for like some things. I guess if you want to min max, I just, I just like having a lot of power. I like the power of focused Ellie. So I would, I'm definitely going to change the sigil to sigil of accuracy and sigil of force. So we have damage and more precision so to do more critical damage for critical chance I mean so I would definitely recommend sigil of accuracy and sigil of force and for your runes runes of the scholar period that is the only great rune for this build you get tons of power tons of ferocity and extra damage while your health is above 90 percent is extremely good and these can be a bit expensive so I, I recommend you save up but they're definitely well worth it now for your infusions, as you see, I have not even have any infusions for my armor because it, it's super expensive. But um, for infusions, you want to get precision infusions. For your weapon, as you see, I already have my two precision infusions. So my weapon is completely maxed out already. I just got to change the sigil. And for your trinkets, once again, you want to have precision infusions. Like I said before, it's good to boost the precision on an Ellie because you have more crit chance and precision boosts that. So if you want to go uh, precision infusions rather than power infusions, that's a really good thing to do. If you don't know how to make um, infusions, I, I believe I have a video on a channel somewhere. I'll link it on screen right now and in the description if you don't know what infusions are and how to make them and whatnot. So there's that. Now, because I don't have this build uh, complete yet, personally because I don't have the proper accessories and I don't have the food on me right now. I have a link. I have created the build on um, Guild Wars 2 Skills, I think, or Guild Wars 2 uh, Build Builder, I think. I forget what the website's called. But there's a link in the description and we're going to take a look at the website right now to give you a sort of idea of how crazy it is. So here we are. It's Guild Wars 2 Skills.net. I created this build last night and here are the full decked out stats with uh, the gear completely all ascended as you see here is the dream build that i'm trying to accomplish i have everything berserker here i have the proper infusions as well precision infusions and the uh, proper infusions here as well precision infusions everything berserker here and obviously i have the sigil of accuracy here and sigil of force with precision infusions here too now as you see here a 71 percent chance crit however this is not taking into account the sigil of fire. I don't think it is because if I change this, what are we at? Where's crit chance? Oh, no, it is. Okay, it is. It is. It is. Okay, so cool, cool. So as you see, we are getting a 71% 70, 70, uh, chance crit. So almost every three out of four attacks, you're getting a critical chance. Now, if you want to make this higher, like I said, you could get an assassin uh, weapon, but your power would decrease. But look at his power, 2,907 power, almost at 3,000 power, which is insane amounts of damage. And you know, not, not no toughness and vitality, so this is a very dangerous build to run in the jungle, which is why some people are suggesting you get this skill right here, because it basically stuns the enemy and it'll save you from getting hit a bit more. However, if you're good at Ellie, and if, if you know how to play, you know, you know how to move, you have very good mobility skills, then going full out damage is fine. So this is what I run. This is my personal build. I do very successful with this. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Here are all the stats. If you want to take a look at them, our ferocity goes well over 1,000. And critical damage, look at 231%. So we get over double our damage. 
So if you want to take a look at this build, the link is in the description, like I said, and hopefully you find it helpful. Now, the other build that I want to go over is the really fun Auromancer. And it's it's just so fun. It's really fun to do. So um, if I, I'm going to go in, back into the game just to show you something real quick. But I'm going to show you the build on the website here because I don't have the proper gear and I don't have... Um, I usually don't use this build a lot. The Auromancer build is more like a fun build. But I'll show you guys in game real quick what I do have. So for the Auromancer build, what I'm running is... You want to run Cleric's gear? Now I do have... I think, what do I have here? Yeah, I actually have Cleric's gear and I have Magi's gear. Magi's gear mainly because if you're looking for more vitality. But, you know, precision... Precision alone isn't really that good. I just have two sets here. I have Vitality and Toughness because Cleric gives you power and toughness, which is what you want to go for. Plus, you have Runes of Radiance, which are really good. I'll go over the Aura um, synergy in a second. So this is basically what I usually run when I want to do Aura Man. So I go Cleric because I have Runes of Radiance. However, uh, Magi's, if you want to go for a cheaper set, uh, Magi's gear and runes of altruism are fine if you're if you're lacking the gold So you could go that however. I do recommend runes of radiance and the uh, cleric gear now for the weapons dagger is great and Warhorn now yes a warhorn. This is actually using a warhorn for sigils uh, benevolence Great for boosting your healing, since we are focusing a lot on healing power here with the Cleric's gear, obviously, or the Magi's gear. Uh, Apothecary, Apothecary gear is another option. You could go that if you want. And then for the Warhorn, I have Bloodlust here just to give us more power. But you could go Sigil of Life or Sigil of Water if you wanted to focus more on healing. I think the guide that I have linked does have Sigil of Water. Uh, I have Bloodlust, though. So, why do you want to run Oromancer? Well... The reason why, we take a look at our traits real quick. For our water, we obviously have the bread and butter here. Powerful aura, which shares all of our auras, right? So, in fact, let me just set this up real quick so I can show you in-game because it's really cool. Alright, so as you see, I even have the uh, the whole color scheme going on for the cleric gear here. <laughs> I, I tend to use this build a lot, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, this build is mainly good for if you're running in small groups in story mode, or if you're doing like a Verdant Brink Defend uh, mission. Or if you're going with like a few friends that are very power heavy. I use this in my guild hall mission. Worked very well. Is able to support a lot. So it's it's a heavy support build. But check this out. For our skills, we have all the auras. Now, Warhorn is great and because it you actually get auras off of it. You have an aura from your lightning here. We have an aura from skill three here, shocking aura, right? And we can we have some CC here with lightning. We have some CC with our water here as well. So it provides some CC. It also provides a lot of healing. We have water five. We have water two to provide healing. All of our auras provide healing, which I'll go over in a second. And a really cool synergy is having a blast finisher, a combo finisher with a uh, sand squad is really good. So you could run, perhaps, uh, Arcane Brilliance to do a Blast Finisher with Sand Squad if you wanted to. Or a lot of our water skills can have a, a Finisher with Earth 4. For example, I believe the one is this one right here. I think this is the one. If we do something like that and then go... Yeah, there it is. So you can have a Blast Finisher of... With your water five and your earth four i believe there's a lot of different finishes you can do with a blast with this powerful earth four it also gives you a magnetic aura which is really great too so the warhorn is great for a lot of aura stuff but essentially what you'll see here is if we go to our traits all of our auras give us protection and a lots of protection for a long time we're able to stack protection for a long time with this trait here then we're immune to, well, we're not immune. We recover faster from CC, which is always good. And you have an option of going either Diamond Skin here, or you could use this one to not be, um, this one right here, which is to not be critically hit. However, this one's extremely important, I think, because 
uh, recharge reduces by 33%, which means we can use Earth 4 a lot more. So have an option on this one right here, but essentially bottom, bottom, top is what I go. And then bread and butter here is powerful aura. Like I said, our water skill, it shares all of our auras. And then for Tempest here, this is really cool. Overloads grand aura, right? Great. Then here, we're able to give vigor and, re and regen on all of our auras. And then we're able to give a frost aura with all of our auras again. Over here, we're able to give another frost aura and regen with all of our auras again. Protection with all of our auras again. And then regen and vigor with um, cantrips. Is this what I wanted to do? Cleansing water. Actually, you may want to go cleansing water here. Do I have that in the build? I may need to change that. Um, the main reason why is because this build does lack condition removal. So you may want to go cleansing water for that condition removal. I don't know why I had cantrips picked because we don't really have any cantrips. So yeah, you may want to go this trait. I may have to fix that on the website because I don't know if I have it like this or not. So cleansing water is great. But that's basically a trait trait. I don't want to go over this too long because this is you know just a fun build. But check this out. Because we have the runes of radiance, what we're able to do is obviously have boons and have our auras last longer. Auras last longer mainly. But we're also able to give a light aura. So we can give us five auras here. Check this out. Watch this area right here. Look at all the boons we can give. And look at all the auras we can give. Check this out. We're going to start on air. Use three. Use this. Use this. Use this. Use this. Look at all those auras. Look at all those boons. It's crazy. So it's just a fun build to use. It's very spammy. You can spam this build a lot. Uh, it's typically how I play. I play as a very spammy type of build. We have lots of auras going out, lots of support. So it, it's it's really fun, and you know it's just a it's, it's a nice build to run if you're in a group, or if you're doing like a story mission. Look at four or four boons here, four auras, and then obviously we can't use aftershock it because on cooldown. But that'll be five auras. And it, it's it's just really awesome. So those are the two builds that I run for PvE. Hopefully, the few of you that have requested the video, you found it enjoyable. Like I said, the full link to all the food for the Oromancer build, which I haven't gone over because I don't want to make the video too long, but all the details and all the stats and all everything specifically what you would need are in the two build links below. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, any feedback for the build, any things you would change, have a nice little discussion in the comment section below. You can leave a comment. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go and subscribe. Plenty of other Guild Wars 2 content on the channel. And more Guild Wars 2 content coming in the future as well. And yeah, pretty much it. Thank you for watching as always. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. I hope that this video helped you out in any way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It'll really help me out. If you didn't like it, you can leave a comment below as well and give some feedback. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comments as well. And I usually try my best to answer those comments within the next 24 to 48 hours, depending on how busy I am. I also have plenty of other content on my channel about different gaming tutorials, as well as general gaming videos for Guild Wars 2, League of Legends, Minecraft, and any others that you may be interested in. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, check it out. And if you like what you see, you can subscribe too would really appreciate you can also check out my other channels and social media as I show on the screen right now and with that thank you so much everyone and this is GSMA Smart and I'll be back sooner than you think don't go anywhere